So we took a little time to create our developer account for Amazon, and it takes us to this portal. When you go back home, you're going to do the same process. Developer.amazon.com, you're going to log in with your credentials. Then you come here, and it's going to have this sort of welcome dashboard screen. And you're going to get communication here. Amazon is going to be telling us stuff that's happening within the system. For example, Facebook deprecates API version 1 on April 30th. So in, in the portal here, they're going to be providing you also documentation to accomplish various things, such as the ability for someone to log into your app via Facebook. So let's say you want to have a private section of the app where someone can log into to get extra content. You don't have to spend a lot of time building that because Facebook and Twitter and Google provide a way to authenticate a user through their system. Because so many of us have a Facebook account, we can integrate Facebook login to our app. Uh, the documentation of how is going to be here in the portal. But anyway, this is saying if you're still using version 1 of that, you're going to deactivate it April 30th, which already passed, obviously. So that's, what, that's how we keep up with this, what's going on. It's this latest one. Amazon App Store introduces new app categories to improve discoverability. In a moment when we create our app listing and such, we used to have, like, let's say, 10 categories to put our app into. It looks like now they've added more, so that when people are browsing, what's a new app? Let me search around. They can find your app. Your, your app might have gotten lost because it didn't quite fit into a category. Now they've made more categories. Yes. <laughs> it is related to that. Facebook's tentacles are everywhere. And so if you, uh, if you do use some other system, um, it could open you up to that, which you may or may not want that. It is convenient in one way, but it could be intrusive in another. Um, this is something that I have to educate myself also in. Uh, Amazon Underground. This is pretty new. I haven't had the time really to look into what it is. But at some point you want to learn more. A new way for developers to get paid. Yeah, I, I need to read that. And I would recommend you do too, because it might be intriguing. Just like when I saw at the very beginning on that other screen, creating merchandise for your app. That sounds cool. Um, I've, uh, I've, got, I've got an account at, at two t-shirt shops where I upload my t-shirt designs and then um, I just sit back and, and, and collect a little money off of that. So it looks like Amazon is doing that as well. You, do, you upload a t-shirt design, people can buy it there, and then you get, you get money from that. I don't have any apps at the moment. My dashboard doesn't say there aren't any apps. I haven't sold any apps. I don't have any apps. So at the bottom right corner I have Add New App. We'll do that in a moment. We're in the dashboard. Let's take a quick look at apps, or apps and services. Oops, it signed me out because I didn't do anything. It does sign you out if you're not active. But anyway, we were in Dashboard. If we looked at Apps and Services, then we've got this screen with many sub-screens here. This is a pretty complex screen because we can do pretty complex stuff with our apps. Apps and Services. This will list all my apps. I can set up this testing service. I have this one device to test with. And I can create virtual devices, sure. but I can't always test things as best as I could, they have a service that they'll test your app on real devices and give you feedback and tell you if you fix this, this will work better on that device. You can explore these on your own, but you can do promotions, you can add mobile ads, again that's a way to get paid from your app. Give it away for free, but every time someone clicks, maybe you get a dollar. I don't know, you have to look how much it costs. You can have login with Amazon. That's another way. If people already have an Amazon account and you want people to log into your app, 
there's going to be documentation here how to set that up. So that way when, when it says, please create an account, either with your username or with your Amazon account. And almost everyone here had an Amazon account, so that's a way to log into your app. Cloud Drive, again, we've got this pouch database. It only exists on this device. If you uninstall, if the user uninstalls the app, that data goes away. Better would be that the data is also synchronizing to a server. A server is not free. So there's a whole Cloud Drive and a whole Amazon Web Services link and the Elastic Cloud platform and all of that. There's a whole way for you to buy cloud storage for your users can save so that your users can save their data. Then when they throw this piece of junk away and get the next one next year and they log in, your data will follow. And that requires more setup, of course, and it's not free, but you can see some of the possibilities here. Alexa, I'm not fully sure what that is, but they recently released some sort of voice activated helper thing that you buy and you talk to and it does stuff or something so you can integrate your app into it. Game Circle, if you've got a game you can do uh, if any of you play games on your device you, you know you got 10 points or whatever and then you see that your friends got 20 points and then you try to get more points and then you see a leaderboard and all of that that's Game Circle so that you integrate your app with this whole system of like competition a B testing is a way for you to test version A of your app versus version B of your app. This is a form of marketing. People do it for websites, for apps, because there's a whole art and a science to getting downloads and clicks and such. A B testing. In the real world, I could develop a handout that looks the same except for like two things and I give one group of test subjects one version and another group another version and then collect the data and see oh it's more effective to put my icon red and in the corner as opposed to blue and big that's a B testing you can do that with your apps publish a version that is designed a certain way and publish another version that it's a different way and then Amazon will test it and so forth and give you data that says it's better that if you publish your app this way more profitable or so forth. Analytics will tell you all of this data. How many apps downloads do you have? How many crashes have you had? What are the popular countries that are downloading? What are the comments that people are leaving? And all of that great stuff. Ways to test the app and all of that. So. This is a pretty deep screen. You're probably going to be spending a lot of time here looking at reporting. Very similar to the analytics screen, but here it'll tell me how many apps have I sold or if they're free, how many have been given away, what have I earned from them, how have the mobile ads worked what crashes have happened in my app, and so forth, my reviews for my apps. You have support and documentation. I'll come back to support, but documentation has the instructions about everything. What is A-B testing? How do I set up a cloud drive? How do I do in-app purchasing? It's all going to be here. What are the what are the recommendations for marketing my app? How do I get found and submit my app? So lots of documentation here. You can look at that on your own. Support. Again, just a lot of questions and answers under support. setting you would go back to settings to edit these things your account your company profile your payment info tax identity See if you are going to be making money off of this technically you need to be taxed on income so especially if you're making twenty thousand dollars a day off of this thing then you will be need to be reporting some of that to uncle sam so all of this here 
under settings you can check out on your own For, but here's one thing perhaps under settings subscription you're automatically subscribed to the announcements and newsletters you may or may not want that I would recommend leave it on get a few of these newsletters as a developer read what they're about and such you might find good tips especially as a new developer and then eventually when you get tired of them just unsubscribe Let's go back to apps and services. Add new app. This button actually, if you clicked it, that's okay, but this button has upload an Android app, a mobile web app, a PC or Mac app. Obviously, it, we're doing an Android app, so if you just click that, it'll go, uh, it'll also go here, Android. Services available for Android, mobile web, services for web apps or mobile optimized websites on Kindle Fire and select Android devices. That's something that I've got to educate myself more on also, but we're going to target Android. And then PC, you can make, you can publish apps here also to PCs and Macs. But we're going to be doing Android, so click that and then next. App title. The app title will be the name of our app as we defined it in the config XML file. Remember, I asked you to call your app your last name, MySDCE. This is the name that your app will have on the App Store. So when you see the Facebook app, uh, the Tomb Raider app, the Telegram app, whatever, that's the name of your app on the App Store. You can erase if it's any point, right? This is the name uh, that appeared below the icon. The ID will be on another screen. Now, good question there about we can delete this. We can delete any of this, but I want to say at this point here, um, unless they've changed it, if you want to delete any of this stuff, we need to go over to the support screen and click on a button there to request them to remove it. It's not as simple as just going delete my app. We do have to go to support and tell them delete my app, and then some someone in the tech support will do it, it, but it's not just a simple delete app button. Is it can be anything we want. This will be the name that appears on the store. So if you're doing it all in lowercase, fine. But I'm doing it here with the capital letters like how my app should be named. Or should be known. App SKU is optional, and this is for you, because if you are a business owner, you know about the stock keeping unit, which means if I'm, if I'm a, a company and I'm selling five different kinds of sweaters, uh, each sweater in my inventory system has a certain code number, a stock keeping unit. This is optional, but for your own records, if you're keeping track of the sales of your apps and such, you would put some sort of code here. So let's say this is, I, would, I could write something like uh, MSD-01. That's the system that I made up, that this is my app, the MySDC app version 1. If I'm later selling, let's say, my, my game, Maybe I've got a code system of GM because it's my game, um, you know, Zap01. So I made a, a game called Zapper. And my SKU is this code that I made up myself that only matters to me. The user never sees this so that I can keep track of that within my own internal system. Because it's optional, I'll leave it out. But if you'd like to, you know, code your 
have a unique code for your particular app internally, you can. Category. So now we've got these categories. We had less categories before. Let's see, where does our particular category, uh, our app fit into? I would say education. It's an app about education. You could think about it in terms of who is my app for? What is it about? And then fit it into these categories. I suppose it could fit under local as well because these colleges, if you're going to take these classes, they have to be at the college, which is local. You know, it might not be a, um, very, very useful to have this app in New York, although there are classes online, of course. But I'm going to select Education. Category Refinements. So depending on the category you chose, Education, let's see what we've got. Alphabet, Arts, Creativity, we can turn on a bunch of these. None of these, to me, seem to fit, so I don't need to select any. But if there are categories that would apply, I would turn them on. That helps you be discovered so that people can download your app. You can have different tech support numbers for every app, but notice the default here is that it will use the one that we created earlier which you can find again inside of settings. If this particular app needed different tech support numbers, you can turn the check mark off and select and type some different tech support numbers. So I'm going to click Save on this screen. And so then it takes me here. Here's the name of my app. Current version, it's incomplete. We can also see reviews, other stuff about it, live app testing, so we can test our app. So this is our current version, it's not complete yet. We have to go through these six tabs right here. We need to get a green check mark for each of these six tabs. I've got a green check mark for general info. I filled in app title and the rest. It gave me a, this internal code, an app key, so forth. So, okay, my general is done here. Let's look at availability and pricing. Will this, will this be a standard or underground app? Again, I don't know what underground is completely, and what does it say? Uh, a new monetization model where Amazon pays developers based on the amount of time your app is used. With Amazon Underground, you can turn 100% of your Android users into revenue-generating customers. You get paid from the very first minute your Amazon Underground app is used, and you will continue to be paid for every minute of use by every customer. Does my app apply? To understand if your app applies, read the, the outline here. It's interesting. So if people use your app, the longer they use it, the more you earn from it. But I'm sure there's a downside. Um, I haven't used this before, so I can't say too much about it. So for the interests of this class, I'm just going to select it's a standard app. which includes paid apps, free apps, and paid AIP, which is in-app purchases, if someone buys something from within the app. Where would you like your app to be available? Basically 200 countries, or only select certain countries. 
going to say everywhere. But, you know, thinking about it, it might really only be useful for North America, U.S., because of the class, the nature of the class. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not really going to set this, but notice we could target our app for specific regions. Are you charging for this app? No. Or yes. If you do yes, I believe it says somewhere here that if you start up, if you set this as a paid app, later you can set it to a free app, but then you cannot put it back to a paid app. If you set this now as a free app, you cannot set it later to a paid app. They can't. They won't let you do that because it could cause you know problems regarding bait and switch tactics. Which is this app used to be free and now it's not free anymore. People would complain about that. But they do it all the time. But they increase the price and then like from nine 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 to to twenty nine nine nine. So you can't get all the that. That's it's true. But it started with a price. It started at 99 cents and then it could increase to 299. But here, if you start it at zero, they won't let you then update it to 99 cents or higher. It's not selling for a penny. It, it's a free thing. Nobody's going to ever see it. So it's selling for a penny. I think the minimum is 99 cents. I don't think you can sell an app. Yeah. So, yeah, completely up to you. If you do set a price here, remember you need to set your, your bank account and such. Since I never set the bank account, I'm going to say this app is free, but on, on a real app, I would want to be, start to sell off a little bit of it. 99 cents is not so bad. Um, has your app already been released? If I already published it via the Apple App Store or Google Play, I can set that. And one of the incentives to first publish through Amazon is that um, you can get that boost to be featured on the home page or to be featured like as an up-and-coming app and such. Just more incentive to be featured because if you, go, if you go to Google Play, everyone's on Google Play by default. And then so if, um, if you go to Amazon first, you could get a bump right there to be found. So I'm going to say, no, my app has not been released first. I'm going with Amazon first. If you did release it elsewhere, you want to say when. And then you can say, okay, when would you like to get your app published? This is specific time, but I want to say publish it as soon as it gets approved, as soon as it's available. If we go through Google Play, it will publish as soon as possible throughout the world, no one's really going to check your app. If you publish through the Apple App Store, someone's going to check your app. Someone could reject your app. And all the time and effort that you put into developing it, you know, could cost you more time and effort on the app, Apple App Store. On Google Play, anyone can come in. Anyone can publish their app, even if it's a terrible app. Amazon is kind of in the middle. They will check it mostly for compatibility, and then they'll let it through. Not quite for content, um, but they will check it to, to make sure it's secure and compatible and such. And so if you set a date, your app will be published at a certain time. I want it published as soon as possible, so I won't set a date. And I'll save. Notice if we made a mistake or want to change these things on any one of these tabs, I can go back to Edit the tab. So I've got two greens. Let's go to description. There's a couple of screens that are a little confusing. This is one of them, in that we've got a spot to fill in a bunch of details, which I'll explain in a moment. And then we've got save and add translation. This is the confusing part, because there's save and add translation, and there's save. Don't click the save and add translation because it will save this English version and then ask you, okay, 
what's the next language? Spanish, Tagalog, Hebrew, etc. So don't click that one. We're going to fill this stuff in and we're going to click this save. Unless you are going to save different versions of your description in different languages. I encourage it, but for our purposes we're just going to do the English one at this point. So these are all required. This is the name of the of the app that will display. Short description of only 1,200 characters. Long description of 4,000 characters. So on a mobile device, the short description appears first. On the desktop where we have more space, we get the long description. So we're going to write here, and then we've got product feature bullet points. We're going to write here on the description. The unofficial San Diego Continuing Education app. Learn about the college. Find, find great classes. You can make this up, of course. Learn about the college, find great classes, and enroll today. I would take more time and effort to craft more content here. I, I still have 1,087 characters left, but I would take the time to write a couple of sentences here because all of these keywords that I'm writing here could help me get found. College, education, classes, enroll. Again, that's search engine optimization. If you take my SEO class, we develop a stronger SEO strategy to get your website found, to get your app found, to get your nonprofit organization found, to get found through search, through Google, through Bing, through Amazon, etc. It's an art and a science. It's a whole class in and of itself. I recommend it after this class. But in short, you want to write stuff that helps you get found. Think in terms of people searching something. Keywords, concepts, phrases. Under the long description, I'm going to paste the same thing and write a little bit more. Um, help me out here. What one extra thing might be interesting to say about this app? Yeah. Um, Helpful driving directions included. So again, this is you can totally make this up, but we're just adding a little bit more content to get found. Yeah, it's going to be indexed definitely in Amazon, and then it could also show up on search engines outside of Amazon. But it won't do that until we get. Exactly. Product features. Three to five concise app features, each on one new line. These product features will appear on the Amazon website. So some bullet points. Here's where we can kind of get a little techie to say what our app does. So we're going to say, we're going to sell it. Turn by turn direction. We have um, user customization. We have um, class schedule saving. Or maybe save your class schedule. If our app was also able to take photos or to do other stuff like that, we would, we, would sh we would say it here. But at this point, I think this shows off some of the important aspects of our, of our app. Um, maybe also one more thing, latest, uh, latest class schedule. Because remember, we've got a link over to the class schedule as an in-app browser. So three to five bullet points that catches the attention of why people would want to download this. Q 
keywords is optional. It doesn't have the little red star, but it's optional. But I'm going to recommend it highly. You do want to add keywords. Even though all of these other keywords will be indexed, here's also another place for you to add more keywords to help you get found. Use commas or white spaces to separate. So I'm going to say education, comma, college, comma. This app was showing a few computer classes and a few art classes. So I'm going to say art classes and computer classes. But when I need to have spaces, I put it in quotes. Art classes, comma, computer classes. Because notice it says use commas or white space when you want to separate words. I don't think there's a limit, but I would put, you know, five to ten keywords. I've got four. Uh, keyword San Diego. And I can edit this as many times as I want later. At this point, you want to click this, the yellow Save button. Not Save and Add Translation. Be careful, because then that'll expect you to write the, the version in another language. I'm just going to click Regular Save, the yellow button. And then I've got three greens. I'm going to skip images and multimedia for the moment and go over to content rating. Content rating. Subject matter. Moderate and strong and none. You have to tell Amazon which of these subject matters appears in your app and at how frequently. So how much realistic violence appears in our app? None. Cartoon violence? None. Drugs? None. Nudity? None. Sex? None. Intolerance? None. Profanity? None. Academic? This application is for education purposes? Yes. Additional info? Account creation or other personal information collected? Account creation or other personal information. Oh, that's funny. It asks you. The, it tells you the same thing twice. But uh, yes or no? You could possibly say yes because there's a part there where you can customize the app. It asks you your name. Conceivably, Amazon, if they are being very strict, they could say there is a part where your app asks a person's name. Um, so conceivably, that could be yes. Account creation, not really. But personal info being collected, yeah, a person's name. Um, I would err on the side of caution and put yes. There is some account creation happening, a person's name. Yes. What's that? No, there should still be the part where, uh, where it pops up to ask uh, your name. Because remember, it then says, welcome, Victor. Take an art class, Victor. That part's still there, to my knowledge. Are there advertisements in the app at the moment? Uh, no, I guess. I guess you can kind of say that the app itself is an advertisement for the college, but I don't know. That might be a gray area. I'm going to say no. It's not, in, it's not ads in the traditional sense, and we can change it later. Is the app primarily marketed at kids under 13? No, you have to be at least 18 to come to this college. Is there any gambling in this app? No. Location detection or location-based services? Yes. yes. The map gets a location of your GPS. User-generated content or user-to-user -user communication? Yes or no? Yes, I would say yes. It's asking the user to generate content. When you type in those classes and notes or whatever, that's user-generated content. 
I would say yes to be safe. Also, I the customized yeah. when you put in you know, the name. The exactly. Mm -hmm. Privacy policy URL required. Required if app collects personal info. Ours does. So here we need to have a link to a website that explains the privacy policy. I'm going to give you an example that you can use and edit for your purposes. If you go to http colon slash slash pmdinteractive.com slash privacy. This is the PMD Interactive, my company's app policy. If you copy and paste this, I'm not saying use my address on your app, my privacy policy doesn't apply to your app. I'm saying if you go here and copy this and change it to put your name and such, you can use it. The thing is though, it's asking for an address. So again, you would need some sort of website presence where this app, uh, where this text can be visible online. Yes? Is there any kind of a privacy statement on the college website? Yeah. However, technically, this should be the privacy statement of the app. So the privacy statement on the college's site most likely only applies to the using the college's website. So we might, you know, maybe just, maybe we could get away with this for a moment. We can put into the address sbce.edu slash legal. So there is a legal page there just to put something in. Or you can just make it up. But the point is if you're going to do this for real as a real app developer and you collect information like ours does, you need some sort of website that has some sort of text for a privacy policy. You can borrow the one from my website. You can also do a search for um, Android app privacy policy template. And you're going to see privacy policy generators and boilerplate and um, templates for free, for paid, etc. The one that I got that I have up on my site as an example, I found it this way. I don't remember where I got it from now, but I searched it. There was this policy. I altered it. I have it up there and covered. You can use mine and change, put your name into it, or you can do some searching and find another one that fits yours a little better. So this should be showing you that, okay, if I'm going to be an app developer going from 0 to 60, if I'm going to do three months of this class, it's not just about all my code that it works and that my Cordova works and all of that. This is the final step of this whole process. You need to be a developer. You need to have these skills in your back pocket to publish your app. And it's not complicated, but there's a lot of... Uh, I's to dot and T's to cross. There's a lot of details. So for example that. I'm going to borrow the college's legal policy. Again, I would really want to craft one directly for my particular app. This will work okay for educational purposes. And then on the bottom right, click Save. So I'm going to save that. 
now I have four out of six greens. We'll click binary file. Binary file. This is another one that be careful because we have save and add binary as well as a regular save. The save and add binary is if we're uploading different versions of the app. So you don't want to click on that one usually. You want to click on the regular save. First question, apply Amazon DRM, digital rights management. This will protect your app from people decompiling it and steal your code, in theory. If you want to turn that off, then there won't be those restrictions. You can choose that or not. It's on is recommended, so we'll leave that. This App Store certificate stuff, this is just for your information. Don't worry about any of that at the moment. And then we've got binary file. We, uh, we are then going to upload our .apk file so that Cordova build android-release, that apk file, we're going to upload it here. If it's more than 150 megabytes, we have to upload it via SFTP. Ours is barely like one megabyte. Mine, at least, is 857 kilobytes, less than one megabyte. So on this window, you can click on that button, Upload Binary. And on my desktop, I have my release-ready APK file. If you don't have it, that's okay. You can do it later. But this is the screen where you would tell Amazon, here's my app, my stce1-release.apk. I'm going to select it. It's going to upload. It's going to analyze the file, give me back a little, back, a little information. It's, it sees right here, manifest package. There's my ID. Version code 18, version name, file size, and show more. Mine then gives me a big scary message. This APK's manifest conflicts with 13 of your targeted Amazon Fire devices. Um, not too worried about that. Um, starting in October, any APK update will require an updated manifest to maintain your current device support. Click Edit Device Support below. Okay, Edit Device Support right here on the side. Um, right now, um, our, div our app will be compatible with 18 Amazon devices and more than 200 non-Amazon devices, which just means the Galaxy Edge and the Motorola E and the Samsung whatever. So okay, great. It's very, very, very compatible. It's not, ex it's not compatible with Amazon devices, and we would go here to set compatibility. It's not compatible with six Amazon devices. Regular Android devices, so, but we're we're very compatible at this point. Language support, yes. If you're selling an app, does it check compatibility before it sells it to the customer? Yes, uh, they will. Uh, the the system Amazon will let the user know your app is not compatible with. I mean, this app is not compatible with your device, so it does cover that. A person won't download it and then it won't work. They just won't be able to download it. Export compliance. You have to turn this on. And basically it's saying, um, your app is going to be in compliance with applicable laws and regulations governing imports and exports, especially regarding encryption. You might not think about it, or you might not know about it, but encryption technology is highly regulated, almost like weapons. So uh, if you have an app that can encrypt, that is about encryption and such, there are rules about being able to sell your app to other countries, especially unfriendly, quote-unquote, countries. 
you have to check that on to show that yes you are you are compliant about exporting Amazon Apps Redirection, if you use Google Maps, Amazon will automatically convert the code because it says here that Google Maps um, don't, uh, don't work on Amazon devices. No big deal. Ours is going to go to Amazon devices and regular Android devices. And by turning that on, it will automatically change or make it compatible so that our code still works on Amazon devices. Because Amazon devices don't use Google Maps. They use here maps, which are from Nokia. Binary alias. This can be anything you want. I'm going to call it my SDCE1. Because, as I said, Amazon is like in the middle. Google Play is the Wild West. Uh, Apple App Store is a walled garden. Google, uh, Amazon is in the middle. They will test your app mostly for compatibility and then let it through. Not really for content and such. But if you require special testing here, you can add that there and then a person will look at it, test your app, and so forth. I don't need any special instructions. I'll just click Save. I have five out of six green. The last one. Images, <coughs> images and multimedia. This is another screen. Save and add localized media. This is another screen. Be careful because we're going to set this up targeting an English-speaking audience. We could then also set up a Japanese version. So be careful about adding this stuff and clicking save and add localization. Remember to just click a regular save unless you know you are targeting it for other languages. And what this screen is about, which is required, some of these are required, some not, but here's where we have to upload a small sized icon, and it tells you here, 114 pixels, ping, transparency. So a little square graphic, the small version of the icon, which will then appear up here also and on, and on the device when someone searches. You've got the large version of the icon, 512 pixels. That'll be when people view the large preview of your app. Screenshots, so that people can see what your app looks like. Let me take a quick digression here. Remember, we have software built into the Android SDK that will allow us to take screenshots. It's in one of my handouts, probably like number six or something. But let me remind you where that software is. If you go to computer, local disk, Android SDK, remember the Android SDK where we create our virtual devices and such, you go to Android SDK, you go to tools, folder, under tools folder, we have monitor, monitor.bat. If you double click monitor.bat, I've got a device plugged in. If you've got a virtual device running, this will also work. Again, this is in my instructions how to take screenshots. Just a quick refresher. Remember this screen. This was our log cat, and then also this is the place for us to select the device and click right here, screen capture. So right here, which my device is unplugged, actually. It's probably asleep. Let me plug it in again. Here's where I would... Um, here we go. So it woke up. Screenshots. Let's say my app is running. So my app is running, I would click save, and this would save screenshots. 
it is a requirement for Amazon and Google to include screenshots to show how your app really looks. Screenshots. Three to ten things in this format. One, uh, one caveat here to make a note of. If you can also do this with virtual devices, you can take screenshots of the virtual device. That's pretty useful. But be careful. The virtual device that we've been using the whole semester is smaller than the smallest size here. You'll have to create the second large, a, 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 lar a, a larger virtual device to take screenshots of them because the that virtual device that we've been using, I think it's only like 360 by 480 or something. It's smaller than the minimum required here. So when you create your virtual device, you'll have to go to the next higher level up. And you can do portrait or horizontal, and you can go up to this huge size of 25. That's like 4K size, I think. Um, I have a question with the screenshot. Yes. A couple of cases. Um, so what do you do? We bring that screenshot and we take it to a Photoshop and we create like what we did in class. Like make the size and the camera size. Um, you might just do it like this. I'm going to do it right here. I'm going to do a screenshot capture. I'm going to save it right from here onto my desktop. And I'm going to upload it directly. Most likely, I don't have to edit that screenshot. But what size is one? Let me check. On my particular device, 540 by 960. Um, 540 by 960. No, it's not, actually. Good point. I'm just going to try to upload it, see if it accepts it. So yeah, I might have to take it into Photoshop and change the size a bit. Yeah, fail to upload. Screen size is 540. Acceptable dimensions are 800 by 480. 800 by 480. And my binary file is still to load. Your APK? Yes. Oh, really? Hmm. Are you sure you uploaded the release version and not the debug version? If it's still a debug version, it'll fail. Make sure you're uploading the release version. The name is like a dot, the, the extension name is .aps, right? So the release or the, or the debug are both .apk, yes. But if you're trying to upload the, the debug version of it, it's not ready, it's not compatible. So you do have to remember to do Cordova build Android release. Get the Android release Yes, um, the release version, exactly. So the screenshot is required. I would have to uh, make screenshots of my app and then uh, upload them. Amazon Fire TV screenshots are optional. And anyway, I'm not really targeting those devices, so I don't have to add them. And then a promotional image, recommended. Not required, but recommended, and I would recommend it. You have to design that in Photoshop, make some sort of horizontal graphic banner that stands out to get people's attention. 1024 by 500, ping or JPEG, landscape only. And then a video, which is optional. But a video is nice because then you can show your app in action. You could do a little commercial, 10 seconds, 30 seconds. It doesn't have to be a five-minute video. 10 seconds, 30 seconds video of, um, of you using your app uh, to entice people. How does this app work? And uh, 150 megabytes maximum size.
So because this sequence of three classes is usually four weeks long per month, we're missing a, a week for this class, unfortunately. So there are still a couple of things I wanted to do with the app. We don't have time. This I wanted to be able to do, but obviously we need to open up Photoshop and design some graphics. But we've done that before. We've made graphics and that sort of thing. In theory, this is not that complicated. So we'll kind of have to end it like this. Usually we get to the point where we get all six green and then we submit. In other semesters, we're able to do this on the Tuesday of the last week. Then we come back on the, the last Thursday and our app is available for the world. And then we talk about developing a version two. But we're missing a week because this particular class happens to be in November where half the month is a holiday. And then December comes next month where the other half of the month is another holiday. And then January and all of that. So it, we have to kind of wind down the class at this point, but you're like this close to publishing your app. You just need to put some graphics. You'll be able to save, and then you'll get a button eventually, I believe back on the general info. Let's say I get all of them green. You'll have eventually submit. Then your app will be sent to Amazon. They'll check things out. And usually, at the most, within 24 hours, I've had people tell me that, you know, we, up, we uploaded it on Tuesday night, 9 o'clock, then the very next day, like 8 in the morning, it's available. And then we have that Thursday, and we talk about other things, but we're missing a week. And here then, I, I've led you as far as I could. We've created the account. We've talked about the details. We just need one more green right here. We're ready to publish, and then your app will be real for people to, to find. And I can at least show you and I've mentioned it before, I can at least show you that if you do go to Amazon and you search for my SDCE, you're going to pull up the apps of previous students so that you know you believe that it is possible. If you search my SDCE on Amazon, you're going to get lots of results from previous students back in August. That's Scott's app. You can see Fred's app over here. You can see um, my version from another semester, VJ's app, etc. So this is uh, people's apps that have been published for real in our apps, I mean in our app class, and you can see you can see their listing and everything that we've been filling out, they filled out. There's the, the name of his app. There's the name of his company, Quick Start Prototypes. Wait, a guidance suggested. Free download. It uses GPS features. Here's the screenshots that he saved. He was a little bit of an overachiever, so his design's a little bit different. Um, but the app is up there. Published August 14th. Here's his product features, just like us. Technical details. It looks like Cordova has gotten more efficient because at that point the apps, I remember the apps a few months ago were about two megabytes. Now Cordova seems to be more efficient and we mine is at least under one megabyte. Um, version number, permissions, it needs Android 2.33 or more. You can then review it. It's a real app to download, and if you go to this on your device, you'll be able to download it and check out their app. This one over here, it's got a review. <coughs> So again, it has been done and it will be done by previous students, by future students, by you guys. And um, this is us going this far to do it on the Amazon App Store. Um, 
with a little effort, you go over to developer.android.com and you do the same thing. You create an account, a store listing, upload your graphics over on the developer console, and then you're publishing there as well. The barrier to entry here, $28. Amazon, it's all free. iTunes, $99. Windows Store, I think it's like $20. And you're an app developer. You're all app developers right now. If we did have the time to do the final publication and such, you know, you have every single thing to show for it. We're stuck at this point because we're literally out of time. But we've learned, looking back on our three months here, zero to sixty. There's still, of course, plenty to learn. This is a lifelong thing. I've been doing this for years. I'm always learning new stuff myself also. I've got these apps that have been on the back burner that uh, I keep adding to and improving and so forth. You can look up my apps. If you look up Victor Campos on Google Play, you'll see a couple of my apps there on Amazon too. Um, so it is doable. It just takes time and effort. And again, I think I've said it in the class, but I'll say it again. The more you learn about coding and programming and such, the more you'll learn that it's not about intelligence. It's about time. The more time I have to learn this, the better I get. Everyone can do this. All of these examples here, there's examples of students that have that came in here with no experience in any of this. Uh, I, one, a couple of these students, they didn't have any experience, they just wanted to get in here to learn something new for personal and such, and they created an app. Obviously, as I've always said from the beginning, you're not going to get the next Facebook, the next Instagram but you're getting all of these tools to get you into a journey about here's the software that I need, here's the code that I need, I've got the idea for it now, I'm going to take my time to develop my app, and you could publish it out for real. Yes? For the class? Yeah. I'll mention that right now. So when I teach these classes, I, I like to get some feedback. I mentioned it on a previous class. As we wind down the class, I, I ask for some feedback in the class. If you do a Google search for rate my professor, Victor Campos, you should get a you should get my profile on ratemyprofessors.com. My profile at San Diego Continuing Education. I also have a profile at Southwestern College. If you're going to leave a review, please leave a review at San Diego Continuing Education, unless you took a class of mine at Southwestern College. And those are anonymous, so you can leave. You can tell me what you really think of me there, and uh, you can leave a comment about the class, and that helps me improve my classes in future times and such. And it, if you leave a review, it'll ask you what's the number of this class. This class is number 5863E, Android Apps Part 3, Android HTML 5.3. That's optional, but it's I read them and I take them to heart if they make sense to improve the class and such. RateMyProfessors.com <clears throat> And so you can do that at some point if you'd like. And I'll mention a couple more things and we'll wrap up for the day. Um, future classes. This class sequence is going to be offered again. I, I offer my classes on a regular basis. Now, to my knowledge, this sequence of three classes is going to be offered again, I believe, in the middle of January. Because December is going to come and go so fast, we have half a month there. Then January is coming. So this class, part one, part two, part three, are going to be offered again starting, I believe, in January at the latest February. You're welcome to take it again. The more you take these classes, the more it sticks. It is complicated. I know there's a lot of pieces, a lot of moving pieces. I try to help with my handouts, my videos and such, but there is a lot of moving pieces. You're welcome to take them again. Other somewhat related classes that I would recommend for you to teach, to take, if you don't want to wait until January, if you go to the college's website, sdce.edu, you click on take a class, you can search my last name, Campos, and you'll see all of the 20 classes, literally, that I've taught this semester by start to date 
and what's still coming up this semester, fall semester, in December I'm going to teach web marketing, social media for your business part one. It doesn't only apply to your business because let's say we develop this app for real. We want people to find out about it and download it. If we had the time, we would touch on social media. But I teach a class focused on social media. We spend the whole day on setting up Facebook accounts and Twitter accounts and YouTube accounts and then talk about getting followers, what to post, how to post, how to get followers, because social media for a business is highly important. It's marketing. It's how you get attention, how you get the word out, how you get fame, how you get app downloads and visits to your website. I teach a part one this December 1st. Oh, Tuesdays. So if you come back December 1st, it won't be this class anymore. It'll be day one of social media. So you could be learning social media and how to get your app found. Um, because December's a weird month, I'm also having part two the same month. This is people always this is gonna be very weird. People are gonna ask me, how can I take part two at the same time as part one? You don't need to take part one to take part two. You can take them both. It's just that usually on one month I teach part one, which is four social networks, and then part two I teach four more. So in total, eight social networks. December's weird, so we're gonna have part one and part two at the same time. And you're welcome to take them both. Part one's on Tuesday nights. Part two is on Friday mornings, 9.30 a.m. You don't need to take part one to take part two. If you can take both, great. You'll learn double the social media. You record the video? You need to take the class to find out about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I like on Friday mornings before I'm working, but that's good time. I probably will. Um, then we've got also social media, oh no, uh, advanced Google for businesses. Here, this couples really well with my main search engine optimization class. So that's also December. The, the main SEO class is Thursdays. So if you've got your Thursdays already open, like for this class, if you come back in December, 6 to 9.30, we're going to talk about SEO. And these classes often have the name of for your business, but for your app, for your nonprofit organization, for your paintings, for your resume, all of this stuff applies to that. If I want to get found as an app developer, as a web developer, as an artist, you still need to engage in SEO. The art and the science and the magic of SEO. Part of that is social media. Part of that is advanced Google. Part of that is blogging. So I teach separate classes where we go into more detail, but this is the umbrella one, and you don't need to take one to take another. And you can take them as many times as you want. They cycle throughout the time. So look at January, they're being taught again. If you miss it in December, wait for January. Then the semester is over, and then in January we're going to do this class again, the sequence of classes again. I don't know the days and times, usually Tuesday nights. You're welcome to come back again. So those are my future classes. Any general questions about anything we talked about in the class? Yes. Yeah, uh, going back to get those screenshots. Uh huh. Can you go through that again? That was kind of quick. <laughs> On the yeah, screenshots, the screenshots is inside the Android SDK folder okay. of the local disk. Right? Well, you go back to the, C the, uh, the version we have. Yes. On your local disk, Android SDK. Tools, and you'll see monitor.bat, and that's the that's the app to create screenshots. Monitor.bat. So how can we get can we get to that from uh, from our home? Yeah, when you've got the Android SDK installed, you'll have this as well. Okay, so when we install that, we'll have this. Uh, exactly, it's part of the SDK. Any other general question? I have a question with the, uh, the, the you know, the Photoshop thing. Uh -huh. The pictures, like when we did the class, I knew what I do. We start off with a, uh, a square, mm -hmm. a square pictures, right? And then we we made the rectang rectangular pictures, icon, I mean icons, right? Yes. And then uh, we start 
put a rectangular icon, you can start off with a smaller or big or larger dimension, which which one you start off with, or oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter as long as you get the dimensions that it's asking you for here. So you do want to notice what dimensions it's telling you. That way you can figure out when you do the resize or when you add to the canvas. That way you know how much to add or how much to resize. So for example, you need a, you need a, a screenshot that's 800 by 480. So when you do the resizing, you just need to make sure you hit those dimensions. And, and as, as you say, it doesn't matter if it's the, the smaller or the larger. Right? Exactly. You can start with the smaller one and then just add the larger dimension, uh, or vice versa. And make sure we go to, uh, what was the canvas size? Yeah, we had uh, image, we had big, uh, menu, canvas size, canvas size, and then we also had image, uh, image size, both of those ways. But they're for rectangular before for canvas size. Most likely canvas size. Image size is going to res resize it in proportion, and in, in order to make it rectangular, most likely you'll do canvas size. So we get out of this Amazon.app. You can just. Yes. Since you've saved at this point, you can just simply then at the top right click sign out, and that's it. So that's it for now then, everyone. Thank you for sticking here. We ended up with 12 students, 11 students, no, 12 students out of 40. And so, you know what? Actually, one quick thing. I always do this, and I always.